So, um, yeah, welcome everybody and wait, I tried this. Uh, Ni hao Shanghai. Uh, thank you that everybody joined my talk. Um, the talk, if you may not know about this, or the tutorial is about from cat to, to line, building a, pra a practical guide to build a large, secure CI CD platform with Tekton. This is the slide I took from the CNCF. They sent it out and said, hey, please use this. But actually, I like this much more because that's the thing uh, I like so much about Tekton. And you will see if you like, what is Tekton with a lion or a cat to do? You will see later if you did not already know this. Um, shortly to my person, my name is Engin Diri. I'm from Germany. You may hear it from my uh, weird accent. I'm working at Pulumi as a customer experience architect. Uh, do everything, cloud transformation, cloud enablement. So whatever the customers come up with questions, I'm here to help. So that's me shortly. If you want, you can follow me on some of the social medias. I am even uh, have a GitHub handle. Let's switch to the agenda for today. Okay. Give you a short introduction. And then I will also make a very short introduction. I'm not going to bore you with some extensive details about Pulumi, Tekton, Backstage, and so on, but give you as much information that you know, okay, how to follow and what we're going to build here. Then we come to the tutorial part where we see all the pieces brought together and moving to say, hey, this is actually working. This is the story behind this. And then we just make a wrap up and Q&A. The idea of the talk is, I mean, we all saw during the day or at work, we saw different CNCF projects. And sometimes it's interesting to see them working together and to say, okay, how I can use one tool to enable the second tool? And what is the second tool doing to uh, deliver more user experience or to, to speed up my deployment process? And this is all about there are some pieces missing. I let it for you folks to check out to say, okay, how can I add, for example, a missing piece? But from the idea, it gives you a very good user journey from beginning to the end. So let's start with the first tool. I chose Pulumi for the infrastructure as code tool. You can also use probably Terraform. You can use your preference um, tool of choice. It doesn't change the idea. The idea here with Pulumi is or with an infrastructure tool is to say, okay, I have different providers I can use. I have different possibilities to connect to cloud providers to create Kubernetes deployments, for example. So this is the idea here. If you use a different tool of your choice, yes, the language will be maybe different, but the idea is the same. I write my deployment of my infrastructure as code and can save it for collaboration with my colleagues together. Here in this case with Pulumi, as you can see, Pulumi offers uh, languages in Go, Python, so you can choose your programming language of your choice to write infrastructure as code. This is useful, for example, when you say, okay, uh, we are heavily using Python for our application. Let's use Python also to create our deployment. So this is the part here. Of course, Pulumi is an open source tool. It has many, many integrations in an existing system. You have webhooks, you have secret management. So everything comes out of the box. This is about Pulumi, but now let's dive into the idea what we're going to use with Pulumi, because when we see the code later, you will recognize and say, ah, yeah, okay, that's what Engin meant with the, 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 the high level overview. So this is the Pulumi architecture. As you can see, we have a language host. So if I choose, for example, Java as my programming language to create infrastructure as code, the Pulumi CLI detects that you are using Java and starts a gRPC service in the background with your language host, translating Java to gRPC calls. Everything goes into the CLI and engine. CLI and engine inside is the main core and then depending on what provider you're using, for example, you say, I want to provision on Ali Cloud, I want to provision uh, infrastructure. Pulumi CLI detects, okay, you are using Go and you want to use Ali Cloud. 
it's automatically downloading the Ali Cloud provider from uh, GitHub and starts also as a gRPC service. Then they start to communicate, yeah, create a resource, update, delete, and the result of every action gets stored in a local state, in a state file. And then you can decide what I'm going to do with the state file. I, I save it locally, maybe not do it because you could maybe delete it and you end up with orphan. You can upload it to a bucket and object storage. Everything is supported and you could even use the Pulumi ZAS offering for free and say, hey, Pulumi, here's my state file. Please take care of it. But again, we talked with uh, somebody during lunch here and he said um, they have a heavily regulated environment. They cannot go out for a SAS uh, service. Then they use, for example, an object storage. Just save the file here. Okay, that's the high-level architecture of the Pulumi engine. How does a Pulumi program look like? So everything starts here with this, um, on the right side with the diagram. So a Pulumi project is the wrapper around everything. The moment you put in your folder a Pulumi.yaml file, Pulumi detects it as a Pulumi project. You will see later in the code what I mean with the uh, Pulumi YAML file. Inside the Pulumi YAML file, I can put some default values in. For example, you say, my Kubernetes cluster per default should always have six worker nodes. You can put it there. The, the, the config in the Pulumi YAML file is always the default config. And then we head over to the stacks on the right side. Now you can say, okay, I use this Pulumi program to deploy different environments, dev, QA, prod, you name it. You can use it for ephemeral deployments. And inside a stack, you can override the value. So imagine you have a dev stack and you want that your developer or your team is not using the expensive worker nodes they could use in productive. So you could override this. You could say, per default, everybody gets the uh, AWS T3 large, for example. But development doesn't need this. It's a very small um, uh, Kubernetes cluster. So you can override this stuff. This is what stacks are for. Next point is resources. These are our building blocks. This is our Lego pieces. We can say, take the Kubernetes resource, take the S3 bucket resource, and stitch them together. And the glue between the different resources are the input and output. So every resource creating an output and every resource has an input. So I can then say, when the Kubernetes cluster is up and running, and this is what I have in our tutorial, the Kubernetes cluster gives me the cube config. So I can take now the cube config and feed it into my deployment or Helm deployment. I can say, here's the cube config, use it. And that's the story we're going to do here, making the turnaround and say, build the resource, get the output, put it into the next resource. And then you can build a graph. So in the back, Pulumi is creating a, a duck and say, okay, Engin wants to create this infrastructure. I can provision this independently. For this one, I have to wait for the output that the resource is finished. So Pulumi takes care that everything is in order and gets executed. And the interesting part we will also see in the tutorial, you can use the output from a project as an input for a project. So now comes the interesting part. We can now model separation of concerns. We can say, okay, the database team is owning the code for creating database. Me, as a user, I can maybe use a ticket system, Jira, ServiceNow, whatever, to tell them, please create me a database. They create it, and then I can just reference the, the Pulumi program and get the values out, like database, URL, password, and so on. So that's all about Pulumi for now, and this is all we see uh, during the tutorial. Now we come to the next one, and now you see why I say the lion, because the tecton icon is a, is a nice cat. So when we use tecton very cleverly in our projects, it can become a lion because it has superpowers. Uh, shortly, for, for tecton, yeah, tecton is an open source framework. Also, main contributors are Red Hat, uh, IBM, 
Uh, Google is also contributing to this, and it belongs to a foundation. We know the last weeks we all heard about uh, licensing and all this stuff. So here, for example, with Tecton, we know it's already here in the in the CD foundation. It will be governed there. So from this side, it's very very cool to use it. Um, what does Tecton offers us? Tecton offers us here composable composability, let me say like this. So I can create tasks and bundle them together. That makes it very powerful. So I can build really my own steps and then distribute them again inside my project, inside my company. Nobody needs to create the 10 time the Dogger build for my Go application. I create this and I distribute this. The newer version of Tecton also supports OCI bundles. So I can create OCI bundles, upload them to my, uh, my container uh, repository, and people can then just reuse this. I'm going to use in the demo also the OCI approach. Declarative, I don't need to tell anything about this. Anybody who worked with Kubernetes know the power here in declarative has, is also working for Tecton. Everything is visible, everything is uh, changeable. And what you see in your Git repository is probably what you also deployed on your Kubernetes cluster. Reproducible, it runs in containers. This is very, very helpful. Some CI, CD systems don't run on computers. They have specific worker nodes. Here we know every task can be run in a container and it will be always the same container, same task. That's very good. We ensure here the immutability. And of course, cloud native, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it runs in Kubernetes, so it's cloud native for me. Um, just again, for the benefits of using this, we just uh, I mentioned some of the points. Uh, it's customizable. Yes, we can adapt it to our needs. It's reusable. That's what I love so much. You can create tasks and share them. I just mentioned this. Uh, it's expandable. Tecton offers a Tecton catalog, a Tecton hub, so you can create now your own components, as I mentioned before, and share them inside your company through the Tecton catalog. People can browse and can just reuse them in their own pipeline. Very, very powerful. Uh, it's standardized. Yes, it uses the Kubernetes resource model. So we have here a standardization going on out of the box uh, without thinking about this. And it's scalable because it grows with your cluster. It's really seamlessly growing. What are some other benefits? Because yeah, we have Tecton pipelines. There's a whole ecosystem waiting for us to use. So I put some of them with the icons. So we have Tecton pipelines, that's the main one. We have Tecton triggers. We can create now our own triggers on basic stuff like Git changes. Somebody pushes new stuff in a GitHub repository or in your Git T or in your Azure uh, DevOps. We can configure and say, hey, please execute this. Please build the Tecton pipeline. You can connect it to your Jira. You can connect it to service now. It doesn't matter. As long as you get information out, you can send it to Tecton. You can do some interceptor work, uh, transforming the body of the workload, and then execute whatever you think. Very powerful. Tecton CLI. If you need the CLI, you can execute all the CRL commands also. Tecton dashboard, what you will see, I, I deployed Tecton dashboard because I like to see dashboards from a developer perspective, um, is also there. Tecton catalog, I just mentioned, Tecton hub. If you ever use, uh, for example, OpenShift, you will see the Tecton hub is connected to OpenShift. You can use then uh, out of the box the task so other persons in the community wrote. The Tecton operator, I use also in a tutorial makes easier to deploy all the pieces of Tecton. So I just need to deploy the operator, define my CR, what I want, and it uh, automatically deploys it for me. And the latest one I like very much, and it's really important for our security needs, for our security posture, it now has also support for Tecton chains. So I can sign my images, I can check, I can check for artifact provenance, um, yeah, I can even sign Tecton tasks and say, okay, this task is signed and I can tell Tecton, just use tasks which are signed. So you really exclude 
the, the situation that you maybe execute tecton pipelines you don't want. You can generically disable this and say only signed one and the signing procedure is up to you how you define this. Okay, how does a pipeline looks like from a high level perspective? We have the pipeline. Every pipeline consists of different tasks and every task has steps. And now you can see, you can run them independently, task A, and then you can even say, hey, task B has a dependency to task A. I say to him, please run after task A is finished. So you can really create a nice structure depending on your needs. So if you, for example, need to update a, a ticket or, or close an issue, you can do this before you proceed to your next step. So have a really, really powerful way to create a dependency here. And then the high level which is executing my pipelines is so-called task runs where I can execute a single task or I can execute it via pipeline runs. I can execute a whole pipeline. And again, pipeline runs offers also uh, possibilities to define schedules. I can define a service account. For example, I can say this pipeline doesn't need uh, cluster admin rights. It just needs rights to, uh, to write on a storage, for example, or to execute, uh, to create a, a, pollu uh, a deployment in Kubernetes. So you can configure this on the pipeline run. You can say the pipeline runs with the service account. We have it in the demo. Or uh, you can say the specific task runs with a, a certain um, service account because it needs to access a secret maybe. And then high level for the, the, the Tecton triggers, as we said, event listener, event comes in. We can then look into the trigger bindings, what did we configured here? And then you uh, can then execute depending on your interceptors and your binding. You can then say, please execute following pipeline. And then the pipeline starts to run. So the Tecton trigger is really, really a powerful uh, functionality. Okay, so far to uh, Tecton. Now I choose for this tutorial, I choose uh, an engine for policies. I wanted to be sure that we can define policies and I wanted a policy engine which works also very well with, um, with Tecton, for example. We come later to the idea why I choose in this case Kiverno. So Kiverno, for everybody who doesn't know it, it's a very Kubernetes-centric uh, policy engine, derives from the Greek word govern. Just look this up, so please. And what are the key capabilities here? What I like very much about Kiverno in this case here, it treats policies as a, as a Kubernetes resource. So I can just define it in my Kubernetes resource. I can, as usually, I write my other resources, I can just go on with the Kiverno uh, resource. It has different capabilities for validating, mutating, or even cleanup resources. So I can come up with a, with a deployment and I see somebody puts in five CPUs. I can say, hey, wait a minute, uh, that's not something I would like. So you could say, I reject this deployment. You can mutate the deployment so somebody forgot the resource and you're like, wait a minute, if you forgot to set your resource, I'm going to set it for you. So you're mutating the, the, the request. Or some other interesting thing we just saw in talks before, Sidecar. You could now use Kiverno to mutate a deployment to automatically inject a Sidecar into your container. Or you could use it to update a Sidecar. Imagine you own the Sidecar and the development team doesn't even know that it exists, but you can take care to deliver the people all the time the latest sidecar version. Just some ideas. Powerful, we just had it with Tecton Chains, is also the container image verification. So that's a, that's a big plus for me when choosing uh, a policy engine. And yeah, everything is, uh, you can set it up, everything in, uh, in tools like Git, for example. Um, Policy rules I just mentioned, we have generate, mutate, validate, image verification, policy exceptions, exceptions also very interesting if you 
depending on the certain uh, conditions, you can just also uh, exclude policies and clean up is also very nice. This is how Kiverno works. I, I jump over this, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, in, in, a, in a nutshell, is, uh, you get an API request via kubectl, for example, and then it's, uh, before it gets applied, the admission hook listens for this one and executes the rule. So there's much going on in the uh, Kiverno engine. But for us as a user, um, there comes a request into the API. Kubernetes uh, interjects this, looks it up, run all the engine stuff and says yeah or nay, and then uh, things get either deployed or not. And this is everything around this. And now comes the part why I love Kiverno in con conjunction with uh, Tekton, because it offers us already out of the box policies for Tekton. So that's, uh, that's really, really cool. So I maybe don't need to think about at the beginning to write rules. Maybe I don't even know, or in my old company we had the situation, compliance is owned by a team who doesn't know how to program. For them, even YAML is like rocket science. They look at you like, can I not click on a button and so on. So we could argue then with the people inside a larger company and say, hey, let's use Kiverno, let's use some of the default uh, policies already listed here, and then if we see the benefits, we can start to write our own policies. And here we see with Tekton already some out of the place. I will use one in the tutorial, and that's very cool. Okay. So, you could argue, say, okay, why Kiverno and not somebody else? What are some of the features which makes Kiverno um, also additionally better for admission webhook? Uh, background reporting, I have event creation, that's some uh, nice functionality on top of it. I like the functionality with offline usage of the uh, Kiverno CLI. So, I can use now in my Tekton pipeline, I can run now my Kiverno CLI to just validate stuff without even connected. So I don't need to wait that somebody says, hey, your deployment failed. I can do it shift left. I can do it while creating the stuff or at least when the pipeline runs. Um, we have a visualization of real-time uh, visualization of our, of our violation, difficult word combination, with the policy reporter. So there is something uh, inbuilt. And now, again, I just mentioned this, it has a huge policy catalog. And this helps you to grow the adoption very quickly inside the company. Nothing is more annoying than having a nice, cool tool for your use case, but then it misses some stuff and you need to build everything. It kills your story. So when you have something to show management out of the box, look, hey, you forgot the resource, Kiverno blocks it. That's very nice. So you can start, you don't start completely empty, get some of the uh, one of the catalog and then replace them later with your stuff. Okay, next one, I hurry up. Um, Kubevela. And this is, I think, uh, this is a, a Chinese project, I think, from Alibaba, Alibaba Cloud, somebody correct me. So I'm, uh, I'm very happy that uh, I'm here talking about uh, my, my tutorial, and I have a piece uh, which is here maintained in China, so very cool. Um, Kubevela is heavily connected with the open application model. So I cannot talk about Kubevela without talking about the open application model. So just shortly, again, I don't want to bore you too much with details, and there are many, many talks, I think, also in this area. What is the open application model? The open application model is... Uh, is a way to manage our cloud native applications, a specification, you can look it up. Um, it provides a very flexible way to define and deploy our applications and it's vendor agnostic. So that's also very cool. So I create with Kubevela a layer, whoops, and uh, people may don't even know what is underneath this because the platform team taking care of the integration, I can just say, hey, please expose my, my application of type web service on port 9090 and it will take care as a load balancer will create the ingress. So I even don't need to think about what is the ingress. It will take everything and makes it very easy for portability. 
And the idea of Kubevela is that developers think in application architecture and not of infrastructure. I work at Pulumi. We do infrastructure as code every day. And yeah, it's true. Most of the time, most of the developers really don't care about this. They are like, hey, here's my code. I, I don't care if it's uh, the VPC you did very perfect and so on. They say, just run it. It gets a problem when the application is not running. You have to think about nobody in the company comes to you when the infrastructure is working perfectly fine. But the moment the application, what generates money, what makes the money for your business is not working, then you get a problem. So that's the thing to take care and say, okay, being application-centric, and this is what the OAM is, it's an app-centric approach, can help. So what is Kubevela done in this term? Kubevela is the runtime of open application model. There are different uh, runtimes too, but I think Kubevela is the reference implementation of the open application model. Um, Kubevela leverages Kubernetes as our delivery, delivery control plane. It's a CNCF project and it offers you multi-tenant, multi-cluster approach. So you can really define your application as a developer. You know, okay, cluster A, B, C, they're available. You can just define them in your application and Kubevela takes care to deploy it to your uh, multi-cluster environment. And it's extensible. That was also good. So if you're not happy with the current add-ons, maybe they don't fit your need, you have now the option to say, I can create my own add-ons using Q, for example, or I can also create custom definitions. We will see this in action. Uh, here, uh, an overview map, how Kubevela fits into the system. As we can see, yeah, we have our CI part. We use the Tekton one. Uh, where is it? No, it's not. Okay, it's not working. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. So, what? Okay, <laughs> that's uh, the Tekton part. That's, uh, okay. It looked in Amazon better than it is in real life. Uh, the add-on catalog we just talked, and then of course we have our day two operations on the right side. And uh, Kubevela is continuously working on new functionality, so I don't know when you had the last time you worked with it, or maybe you did not have a chance at all to look at it. It offers a very cool UI. I have it in the tutorial. It has a GitOps approach with Flux, so now it automatically adds Flux as a GitOps engine, and then you can just deploy also via the GitOps approach everything using Kubevela, and of course, observability, you, you need observability. Okay, how does an application in Kubevela looks like? Application is the top level entity, and then we can start with the component. Component is mostly associated with a microservice, so I can choose from different types. I can say, hey, this is of type uh, web service, for example. I can add then to this application, the top level application, I can add traits. I mean, components, they are not one. You can do N components. You can define your whole structure. You can say, my application uh, shopping, car, uh, sh um, shopping UI consists of the shopping cart, consists of the catalog. Everything is a component. And then you have the traits, which enhances your, your components with additional functionality. You can say, the web service has also an ingress. This is a trait, for example. Um, you can also add policies to this one. And I did not do this now for this tutorial, but it also offers some kind of workflow engine. But then again, there are so many workflow engines out. I was not sure um, how this is going to work. Maybe it makes sense. Have a look into this if you like this. Okay, last but not least, this one is going to be very quick because everybody knows Argo. If you don't know Argo, please look it up. Uh, it's uh, the GitOps engine next to Flux. And um, it offers us, uh, it fulfills all the GitOps practices so we can declaratively create our deployment. It's versioned immutable. It will be automatically pulled when there is a change in your system. And it's also continuously re uh, reconciling it. So Argo CD completely fulfills the requirements from the GitOps. Uh, working group, this four stuff completely fulfilled. 
Um, these are the architectural overview of, um, of Argo CD. So we have uh, Argo CD UI, everybody needs a CLI. And then Argo CD itself consists of different pieces, the server, the repository server. Oh, I have two times repository server. We have the Redis, we have DEX, we have Argo notification inside, and this lives on the cluster. I can even set up Argo to do multi-cluster deployments. So what I create in Argo is then a hub and spoke. I can say I have a central control plane Argo, and then I attach different uh, clusters to Argo. And then I can use the system of application set to then deploy my application depending on uh, requirements to different clusters. Very, very powerful. And uh, you should see this. We're going to use this for our the tutorial too. And last but not least, to make the round finished, Backstage. Backstage is a relatively new project in the CNCF. Uh, it was initially created by Spotify, and you have to think about Backstage is an internal developer or developer portal. So you have now the, 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 the situation, you have a way to talk to your customers, a guided way. So there are two parts of Backstage. First of all, you see the catalog of all your applications. You can configure Backstage to scan your Git repository, to scan your, your wherever you, you save all the artifacts of your, your workplace, and it will create automatically a catalog, and then you can see who's working on what, what products do we have, who's the owner of it. So you get a whole structure. You will see this in the demo that makes um, more sense. And we have also the situation that we can offer with Backstage uh, so-called software catalog templates. So your development team or your infrastructure team can self-serve them infrastructure or projects. They say, I need a Go application. They go to Backstage, they register themselves, they, uh, they answer some questions. You can define, it's completely free, and Backstage is provisioning everything for you. So with Backstage, we, we, can, we have uh, our different requirements. We want speed, scale, we want to reduce any chaos control. So the, we don't want the fragmentation that everybody does what they want. Hey, I created a Git repository here for whatever, and I use um, make files and so on. No, we have a central way now, and this is um, Backstage in the middle. So the best of speed, scale, and chaos control. And on top of it, you can say, okay, Argo CD and Pulumi is heavily supporting this approach because you can define your infrastructure, you can deploy application, everything is possible. So I just mentioned this Backstage for developers is very cool. And Backstage, again, because it's an open source tool, uh, it's uh, heavily customizable. You can extend it with, plat uh, with plugins. Um, it uses underneath, it uses material TypeScript and... Uh, uh, React was it, yes, the React framework is underneath. So when you come in a situation you want to, um, to extend it, this is your software stack you're going to need. I created a, uh, a backstage plugin and it's not that difficult. So the moment you got it, you can now start for your company to create uh, plugins so people can see everything without leaving backstage. Okay, tutorial time. So enough. <laughs> of the theory, everybody talks about theory. Let me talk about the architecture, okay? So how does the architecture look like? So I created here the so-called GitOps platform. We have on top of the GitOps platform, we have the platform team. I created the EKS, I use Amazon. I use the EKS is created with Pulumi using TypeScript. So everything, the VPC, the gateways, everything I need is all defined in Pulumi. And then it creates for us the Kubernetes cluster with some of the deployments already in. The middle column is the deployed workload. So what I deployed, maybe you don't see this, Backstage, Argo, Tecton, and Kubevela already deployed. And Backstage is built to listen to a specific GitHub organization. Everything what happens in this GitHub organization will automatically be picked up from Backstage. So now comes the development team and say, hey, I want to create a new project. 
they go to, this is the green arrows, they go to Backstage, they order their, their project, and what Backstage is doing in the background, it will create a pull request in the platform team uh, repository for Argo CD, and it will also create the blueprint of the Go application in their own repository. So that's this, the green arrow going up here. So this one is the code where the Go application is. The, the, the development team can work with this. This is the pull request to the platform team Git repository where it belongs to them. They decide. Uh, so they will now get a pull request and the platform team is like, oh, there's something new. They can review it and say, oh, that's nice. We do this. They accept the pull request. Argo CD is like, hey, there's new workload I need to deploy. And this new workload is our Tekton pipelines. And when the Tekton pipeline runs, it will automatically deploy this, this application via Kubevela, Kubevela into our Kubernetes cluster. <laughs> so much going on here. Okay, and that, that's the initial bootstrapping, all the day one stuff. And now you can think every time when the development team works on new code pieces, we talked about Tekton triggers. Tekton trigger will see the changes, will trigger the Tekton uh, pipeline again to either rebuild the image because there were changes in the logic or just execute because they changed something in the Kubevela definition because we just talked about you can add traits or you can add components. So every change gets detected and gets executed. Okay, I will show this now and I hope it works. So, but so far any questions, feel free to interrupt me. The session is for you folks, so if any questions so far before I switch to the code, ask. Otherwise, we can do this also afterwards if you feel more um, happy. Hey, yes. uh, hello, and then, yes. Uh, as you know, that's uh, 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 when we do, uh, as, uh, uh, when we use the token the pipeline to do the sus to the deploy, that's, uh, uh, sometimes we meet that our task is 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 a large 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 task. That, uh, we have the uh, uh, scenario that we need to separate the, the task into into pieces. Uh, just for example, we, we we separate the task to task one, task A, and task B. And uh, yeah, and and yes, we yes, we, we know that uh, in the in the publish and the subscribe uh, system that. Uh, uh, when the task one A is passed, is passed, and it will be promoted. Uh, its status will be promotion to to a channel, and uh, uh, the task B can uh, sub subscribe the channel to uh, to be triggered after the after the, the task A is, is successful. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I, as I know that uh, I, I just know that when task B can only can sub subscribe subscribe the the status of the task A, but uh, uh, in some scenario, that uh, we may need some uh, some materials, yeah, some some result from the task A. Yeah, uh, let's let's use the for use the example. Uh, in the task A, for us that we provision a cluster, uh, we create a cluster and wait the cluster to be ready, and uh, the task two, uh, ta uh, task B, we need to use to do some uh, actions on the cluster. So we need to, in the task B, yeah, we need to know the, which the cluster is. So uh, my question is that, uh, is there any uh, way or any global variables so that we can trans translate the task A's result? Yeah, or it, it can expose a cluster ID from, from the task A to the task B. So just to get me understanding, so you talk about the cluster creation and then one cluster is still reconciling or not uh, not fully ready and you want to know how is it possible to get feedback about this or 
Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, task A, a private a cluster, private a cluster, private or uh, successful already cluster, but task, task B needs to do something on the cluster. Yeah, so task B need to get, get a flag, yeah, uh, such, such like a cluster ID or cluster name from class A. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why we can do something on, on the cluster B, uh, on, on the cluster. But maybe we discuss this later words because maybe that's a little ah, bit okay, bigger. Okay. So sorry for this. Uh, then uh, I will come after the talk to you again and we can talk a little bit. Uh, is this okay? Uh, okay, no problem. Yeah, then I just continue this because it's a bigger question and more for thing. Okay, so let me uh, show you everything in action. What I created here now is the, is the demo code. You will see the QR code, you can look it on. I created now two folders, one zero zero infrastructure and one zero one Kubernetes. We talked about Pulumi, we said we can create two different kinds of stacks. We see the Pulumi YAML file is here inside and defines everything in the folder is a Pulumi program. So I create one Pulumi program in the infrastructure folder, defining. So here I can define now everything related to the creation of the infrastructure. So the gateway and everything, it's here. I created a stack called dev. This is here. I said you can define in your stacks specific config, which is different from the normal stack. So my development stack will be deployed in EU Central 1. If I create a second stack, the prod stack, I could then say, hey, this is in uh, US West, for example. Doesn't change anything. Here inside is the code. And here we create our Kubernetes provider. Where are you? Here. Here we create our EKS cluster. And we see the, an EKS cluster gets also out, uh, where are you? Um, here. This is the cube config, what I said. Every resource has an output and gives, uh, for example, here the cube config. So I can say now, create a Kubernetes cluster, creates a, uh, create a Kubernetes cluster in AWS, and then create a Kubernetes provider using this cube config. So this is this definition. Let's have a look how we deployed the single applications. So here again, it's a JavaScript project, a TypeScript. And we have here, uh, where are you? So this is very important for the whole idea. With the, with the stack reference, I can now reference the values inside the 00, zero infrastructure program and can say, hey, please give me, the, give me the cube config from this stack. Because I'm not the owner of the Kubernetes cluster. Maybe that's the infrastructure team doing so. I separated this. Somebody run the infrastructure deployment. Me as maybe a platform engineering team or a platform developer, I can just reference this and start now to deploy all my applications. So we see here, for example, I deployed Nginx as a Helm chart. And then we go, I deployed external DNS because I wanted to show uh, with, the, uh, with DNS is everything. Here I deploy Tekton and so on, Argo CD. The thing what we created here now, which is also very cool, as you can see, I created a Kiverno. But this is not coming from uh, Pulumi. Pulumi doesn't know about Kiverno. 
What I did in the background, I create, uh, uh, Puya was here in this talk, a pokeable abstraction. So I created a component resource called Kiverno, which has the real deployment inside. So now I hide the implementation of Kiverno and somebody else can use Kiverno as a component in my Pulumi code and he doesn't need to know the implementation. So if one day the thing change, the person who's including Kiverno doesn't know about this. He says, hey, I included uh, the version of Kiverno version 1.0 as NPM module. I then say as platform team, I say, hey, I created a new Kiverno version. He then just can include this. So the, the, the trick we do here, creating transparent abstractions using component resources to hide the implementation, to reduce the blast radius of anything, and people can just use it. Because sometimes maybe the person doesn't know what's the best setup for Kiverno. So what he's doing, he, um, he just uh, includes Kiverno in classical TypeScript uh, using the new Kiverno, changes some properties, can send some dependencies, that's it. So, and in this way, I deployed Argo, backstage, everything is deployed. So, let's, I will share the code uh, as a QR code. You can have a look into it. How does it look like in action? So, now we come to the last part to see everything moving together. Uh, where are you? Ah, yeah, here. Sorry for this one. Okay, so this is Backstage deployed. This is Argo CD deployed. This is my GitHub repository where I connected Backstage to it. This is Kubevela deployed. Oops, let me go to the start page. Okay, and this is Tecton dashboards deployed. Okay, so let's do, we are in development team. We go back to backstage. Where is my mouse? So here is the mouse. So I go in, I log in here. In this case, I choose GitHub as an auth provider. So I log into the system and hopefully the internet is not breaking on me. Um, come on, come on. Don't do this now. Uh, so, just a second. Okay, again. Sign in. Okay, now I'm signed in. We created our catalog. As you can see, I created uh, also a test application. Um, this one is our test app, and I can see now the relationship between them. I see, okay, this app belongs to, uh, to who? It belongs to the development team. It's owned by this person. Very, very good. If it has an API, I could... Uh, put, um, also publish the API of it. But the interesting part is now I see all the components available. I can also browse through domains, location, and all the users. But what happens if I want to create a new one? We go to create, and then we see the different templates. I said, this template is completely written by myself. You can write every template to your needs. So in this case, we have a brief instruction uh, it's creating a new Go app with following features. It creates a GitHub repo, Tecton CI, Kubevela application, and Argo CD application. So let me choose this one. It asks for some stuff. I can ask. If I don't want, then uh, it's up to, to, my, to me. So I say uh, kubecon cn, and I can add some demo text to it. And as you see, I 
owner is mandatory. I have to say who owns this component. I can say it's the whole development department who owns it. Now we go in the next step. It asked me where should I create a new GitHub repository. Uh, I say in my silly organization and the name of the repositories should be uh, kubecon cn. Then we go next step. It shows me the information. You can create unlimited steps as you want. It really depends on your process. I can then click on create. And now the magic happens in the background. So I mentioned before, it creates a pull request in the Argo CD repository. It will, uh, it will create the application GitHub repository and I get all my links here now. I can go to the PR and I can see my application code. So let's see how does it look like. If I, now I'm the platform owner. I will get an email, a notification, Slack, whatever. And it's written, hey, somebody created a new application, the new KubeCon application. I can now review the code and say, yeah, okay, that looks fine. I can run a pipeline for config checks and so on. Yeah, that looks fine. And I could then accept the pull request. So before we accept this, we also check uh, our Argo CD. Okay, we see Argo CD currently has only deployed the test app from uh, before inside. Okay, that's fine. So now we check also the application code. How does the application code look like? So Backstage created this folder called kubeconcn. It also templated some of the readmes, so everything is free. The cookie cutting of the project worked perfectly fine. I have here my Tekton pipeline. I have my kubevela application definition perfectly fine. So me as a developer, I can start to work. So the only thing which is missing now that the platform team says, yeah, that's fine. So we say squash and merge, we say confirm, and now we go to, um, to our um, Argo CD. Let me refresh this. And we see it detected automatically that there's a new application with new Tekton pipelines. It's automatically deployed the new pipelines and it already started the build of the image. So when I go now into my Tekton dashboard, here you can see now under pipeline runs, here, it started the kubevela deployment and it also started the kubevela uh, pipeline to build everything. So when we look into this, this was a pipeline we mentioned, we saw in the picture and these are the different tasks and every task has a step. You see, I created a task for cloning the repository. I create a Kaniko to build the image and most importantly, also write the hashtag back into the repository. And then we see also the, the kubevela will be also executed. So kubevela push to, to apply the application. So this takes some seconds, it should not be uh, that long. Okay. Uh, Kaniko, if you don't know this, you can um, create a Docker image without a Docker agent. That's very powerful. So the build of the Docker image happens in my, uh, in my EKS cluster. I don't have a dedicated um, worker node running somewhere. So now he's pushing the image to GitHub. So I want that it's pushing the, to the GitHub container registry. And now I take, tell Kubevela, hey Kubevela, please deploy the image with this digest. And yeah, that's it. And then um, just telling Kubevela, uh, the Tekton also, and now push the changes to the repository. So let's look, how does it look like? So this is my, my application code. And if we have now a look, we see, hey, there is a package. There is the Tekton package just created. And we see 
yeah, this is the image I created here with the laces fine. And when we go into Cubevela, you see there was a change just now. And there should be in the customization YAML, yeah, there is the, the, the SHA. So everything should be fine working now. Then we go back to our Cubevela UI. You see, KubeCon CN app is deployed, and we see all the information here now. These are the components. I can now add additional traits to it. And yeah, the application is so far deployed. And if I need any changes, I can then just update the Git repository. Okay, let's head back to our slideshow. Okay, wrap up. What did we saw? We created a platform all in code using infrastructure as code tool. Again, in this case, it was Pulumi. Um, we created Backstage as a front-facing portal to interact with the platform. So we have now a UI where people can interact with our platform with the golden paths I provided them. Uh, we, we, so we see that Tecton and Argo CD plays very well together. I can... They, because everything is Kubernetes, they, it just works. That's brilliant. Um, what, of course, is missing now, uh, we, we have to implement now triggers. We should create some kind of authentication for the users, a DEX, for example. We should think about security, observability. Yes, there are some missing pieces, but I think the idea to create a full story using Tecton with other parts of the ecosystem work perfectly fine. And yeah, that's it so far. So now, thanks for everybody who stayed to the end. Uh, shin Shin. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. Um, I have a question about uh, um, the Cubevela in the graph. I mean, um, I see that uh, the, the Argo CD is the last thing that uh, trigger to deploy the new version, right? And the Tecton is the runner that uh, makes the chain on the Cubevela configuration so that the um, Argo CD can trigger the deployment. Yeah. So uh, my question is, uh, so basically I can replace the Cuba Villa with something like the Terraform or something, right? I mean, yes, of course. I mean, uh, that's the thing. yeah. So, um, when will be the run of the Cuba Villa on your on your example? I mean, so I I did not uh, follow. Yes, the, of, cor the of course. Sorry, maybe it was too quick. So, I have here in my Tecton, I have two tasks. So two pipeline runs. So when the image gets built, it makes automatically a cube Vela up, uh, uh. A Vela up because then the image changed and I want that the application definition has the latest image inside. Um, every time when I change something in my cube Vela file without changing the logic, maybe I want to add a trait or a component, it will execute this deploy only one. And here there is just one step into it just to do the cube Vela up, you see? We, I use customize to, um, to, to, to change the image tag because I, I, you know, the image gets built from uh, Tecton and the SHA number has to be brought back into the customization YAML because we want to do everything GitOps. So what the one pipeline is doing, the moment the image is built, it gets the SHA number of the new image, pushes them into the, into the Git repository, into the customization YAML, and when I do a Vela up, I'm not doing a Vela up vanilla, I do customize apply, customize change the, the, the SHA number with the latest one inside my application YAML file of the cube Vela, and then deploys it with the latest SHA. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah.
Thank so you. that's uh, that's the thing that the chain on this. And yes, of course, you can change Cube Vela with vanilla Helm charts. So uh, and just, just need to update the template as the first plate to use the other, right? So, sorry? Uh, just need to update the back state uh, templates to use the other uh, thing like tem Terraform uh, replace for the Cube Vela, right? Yeah, if you want to say, I want to offer a new backstage template where people can uh, choose between Kubevela and Terraform, you can either, I right. would then say, okay, you can create here a checkbox. You can say Kubevela or Terraform or Helm. So you can do as an application platform owner, you can give people the choice. Because, as I mentioned, this is everything what you wrote. So if you say either Kubevela for everyone or they can choose between Kubevela and whatever, so it's up to you. I see, but I see, I see. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. That's it. I, I will be here around. To Hello, uh, thank you. Uh, I just want to confirm that uh, the configuration of the application and also the com application code is in the same repository. It's in the same. It belongs to the, the idea was, uh, let me show this here, that uh, because why do I use Kubevela? Because Kubevela is easy for, uh, for developers to change. So everything is inside like a monorepo. So I have the Tekton files. They are not somewhere else. The application team can still change the Tekton file. Argo will de deploy it. So I just gave them here, hey, this is the good thing. If they want to change it, they can change it. And now comes the thing with Kiverno, you can check it now. You can say, hey, if they do some stuff I don't want, I can block it. But the application team is completely independent now because they own now the Kubevela definition. They own the Tekton pipelines. If they want, they can change it. If not, they leave it like this. Mm. So that's the idea behind this. So making them independent while applying to confirm and to, to rules, you know. Because if you don't deliver this and this, then a new project has to keep copy-paste the stuff from somewhere else and so on. Mm. And now you say, hey, I create the Git repository. I put everything. This is also created by uh, Backstage. So everything is created to my rules, but you have the freedom to change it. And with Q Kiverno, I will check it. <laughs> if you do some not good stuff, I will block the deployment because, uh, yeah, so scalable, uh, the people have speed, what we said, speed, chaos control, everything inside. I hope it makes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Then thanks again and I'm, I will be here around if you want to talk then feel free. <laughs>